Hello everyone. I'll let everyone just come in. I'll wait a minute. Um, it's a really nice sunny day today. And um, all right, I'll wait a little bit. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so welcome everyone to Arts Etobicoke Virtual Studio Tour. And um, this is my first live video. Um, I want to thank Arts Etobicoke for having me. Hello, hi everyone. Um, thank you to Akshata, who is the program coordinator at Arts Etobicoke for inviting me to do this today. Um, there's also, what we'll be doing here today is, I'll be showing you around my creative space. Um, we'll be talking about what I've been working on during this time, what, what's keeping me going, and um, just my experiences. There's also some icebreaker. Hello! Hi! <laughs> There's also some icebreaker questions that I'll be going in and out of. Um, they're quite fun and we'll keep the conversation interesting. Hello! <laughs> so, um, I live in Mississauga with my parents and my dog who is asleep right here and you'll get, you'll get to see him soon. Um, so I live in Mississauga at the edge of Mississauga and Etobicoke, so it's I kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, I haven't worked with Arts Etobicoke, but I've heard a lot about them and you know I would love to work further with them as well because I think community arts is so important. Um, it keeps our community growing, it keeps talking, hello, hi everyone, <laughs> so it keeps us talking about our topics today, what we're seeing today, different perspectives. So I think it's it's art community arts is very important. So I'll I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I went to OCAD for material art and design, uh, and I graduated in 2017. And throughout my experiences at OCAD, and it was such an incredible program, I was always drawn towards surface design and surface treatments more, be it printing, painting, embellishment, because I think that for me, it tells a story. There's a sense of narrative. So I was always drawn to that. Um, in particular, there's a technique called polychromatic printing, which involves painting on the actual screen with dyes and then you pull it onto the fabric. So this is a print done on silk noil, which is a very nice durable fabric. And the results are kind of watercolor-like in a way and they're original. You won't get the same result again. So I really took to this technique and I enjoyed, um, hi everyone. Uh, I enjoyed doing it on these thin organza-like fabrics as well and um, how they interact with the light, how, how they interact with movement was very, very inspiring to me. For me, it created uh, a sense of narrative. Um, here's another sample that I really like. I do really like a fuchsia color, so I worked with that a lot. So this is um, a floral-like print. So I really took to this technique and I just realized today is also the graduation for the current graduating students at OCAD so big congratulations to them. And from this technique I developed my thesis project in which I created this art installation of forms made of fabric like this to tell a, a story of like a fantasy scape. And I gave myself the persona of a textile fantasy author because I do love the fantasy uh, genre a lot. And um, recently I entered it in Design TO 2020 and I was the, uh, hello, hi everyone. I was the recipient of the Favorite New Work Award. So that was quite an honor. I'm very, very um, pleasantly surprised and grateful. Um, other than that, I've had a lot of other experiences since graduating OCAD. Um, I worked with um, the Textile Museum of Canada for a few different projects. Uh, one of those was a community arts program. I worked with um, Sistering, which is a women's shelter in Toronto, and we created surface designs, again, surface design, um, using items available at home. So 
you know we used a lot of bubble wrap this was using bubble wrap um, there's a few different samples so these marks here are using in the end of an eraser you know quite quite a lot of sampling and it was such a rewarding experience to work with those women because in the end we created scarves and you know we shared stories about where they're from different countries and that's what community arts does it provides these different perspectives so i think it's very very vital that we keep it going and that's also one of the icebreaker questions why do you think community arts is important so and i think it answers the other icebreaker question too which was the most meaningful art experience you've had um the other art experience um i had with the textile museum but here's a nice one too the other art experience was this doll project where we needed to create it was with project sunshine and we created these dolls that were auctioned for charity and um, surgical dolls which was a very uh, inspiring project as well so let me show you around a little bit show you around the space one second you know i've been in this lockdown too since m march and making art is the only thing that's kept me sane like it's so it's so important for me to make art uh so let's turn this around so this is my desk area and we have my monet over here very inspiring and we're about to see this furry creature that is also very very much in charge of keeping me sane yes art is healing definitely so i like my space to be this magical creative den this is all my work that i've laid out for you um a few other paintings which i'll go into i'll show you them in detail this is kind of like an altar altar like area where um i have a few different paintings um magical box and magic tree just things that keep give me a sense of the theme i enjoy i do really enjoy fantasy and those themes so this is what i'm currently reading for those of you who don't know it know it this is good stuff <laughs> so that's what i've been reading and this is pretty much the space i work in it's not necessarily the most organized space um i would say that it's kind of like organized chaos i know where everything is and but it may not look like that to everyone it's very neat right now though um all right so let me show you a few paintings that i've made during this time let me clip this back on also i always have uh hi i also have um music playing most of the time um i do enjoy synth pop alternative and uh soundtracks and it just i like the um, ambience of my room for those of you that are studio ghibli fans um if you remember howl's room from howl's moving castle that's what i would like to think my room is like um so moving forward we can go through some paintings that i've made during this time okay so i do work with a lot of floral but I like my floral prints and paintings not to be an exact of um a real flower. I like to keep that fantasy and ethereal like vibe going because um I like inverting things. I like I like changing the meaning of things. Um a few other ones that I did and I work a lot with watercolor. Um a lot of digital paintings too during this time. you know there's this one that i quite enjoy so a, and a lot of layering i do like to use different um opacities uh thank you i do love to do that and working with scale as well so we have really big ones and like the one that i've pinned there that i'll show you in detail but then i also have quite small things like you know a little just brush strokes but and then like a little motif kind of thing so i i do paint a lot painting keeps me going 
Um, so let's show you around more. Let's take you around. This. So this thing is where I get my music. Another one of the icebreaker questions on the icebreaker list is, what is something people don't know about you? So I would say that I'm a big history buff. I, I love watching historical shows and documentaries and even travel shows. And I've been doing a lot of that during that this time. Um, okay, so let's look around a little more. So these are a few sketchbooks, which I will get into. Um, and here are some pieces. Like I mentioned, surface design is very important, but so is layering and also reusing things. I'm a bit of a hoarder, so as you can see, I've trapped off cuts and extra threads, loose threads, into this kind of sample at the moment. And um, there's a few different ones of those. Um, this is like a re recycled shirt that I really liked the color of. So I layered different pieces and I like saving all my scraps. Saving my scraps, that is something it's, it's hard to control, huh? <laughs> this is an example of saving your scraps. This has, whenever I start um, a new project, I do go to this because it kind of gives me the colors I like, different textures, and I can create a kind of um, collage, if you will, and then and then that gets me started. The other thing I use before I start a project is this thing here. And now what's this thing, if you ask? So this thing, when I open up, has a variety of different textures and my color palette. So here's an off cut of one of the polychromatic prints that, you know, I didn't, I couldn't throw away because it has texture and color. This is one of them. And it, there's just different varieties, another bright fuchsia. So, and there's, I do like playing with um, shininess in the fabric as well. So this is a polyester, but it's an off cut of something. And when layered with other things, it just it gives me a lot of inspiration. Um, a little orange piece that I couldn't throw this away because it, it pairs so well with this aqua color. So this is how I work. I, I live in these um, in this organized chaos. So let's put that away for a bit. I'll I'll tidy that up. Um, <laughs> so here's some other examples of my work um, there's a lot of collaging that I enjoy as well and um, as you can see I've used tape to put different of the different fragments together and I've used different um, types of mediums I've used ballpoint pen masking tape and um, acrylic paint all kinds of things and this could become a print this could stay as it is this could go a lot of places, so collaging is, um, is a big part of my work. Here's another piece. And this one has a lot more details. Um, I work with a lot of text at times, because um, I feel like it can change the meaning of the piece. So again, when I'm talking about layering different things, I, I often have these different colored acetate sheets or because it creates a different filter like even right now you're looking at things very differently and that could really inspire you to create something else this is um a piece of i don't know what i would call this like a plastic fabric <laughs> and um again it, it was a great color and you never know what it's going to be i'm also a part of this group called 21 day challenge where we work on different embroidery challenges that run three weeks so this is one of them and this is called charo embroidery which is a spanish embroidery um here he is <laughs> so his name is comet um back to the work so this is charo embroidery and you know i'll be continuing that as well here's a few other samples so again playing with the color light layering the backside always fascinates me 
because it has its own surface design. It has its own print and different, the different way you attach things, different textures. Uh, here's another one, which has that shiny fabric. And then it has this hand dyed bit as well with the backside looking like this. So there's a lot of ways and places you can take it. And then again, I might take this and layer it onto something like that or layer it onto something like that and get a different result. Uh, this one is what I used to expose a screen a few years ago. And I keep it because, again, you can do the same thing. You can layer it. You can layer you can layer this on this and get a different result altogether. So that happens a lot. Let's get back here. Okay. So are there any questions so far before I continue further? Maybe we can do another icebreaker questions. Okay, so the other icebreaker question is, what is your go-to meal for your guests? And you know, I would say guacamole. Everyone loves guacamole. <laughs> it's, it's easy to prepare, it's good for you, and I think everyone can enjoy it. Again, it's kind of like a community, isn't it, with everyone eating together. So I definitely enjoy guacamole. Um, so I have some more notes here that I've been looking at. So what's been keeping me motivated during this time? I would say that my art is a kind of response to our reality, what's happening at the, at the moment. And <laughs> yeah, I love a good guac too. Um, whatever's happening at the moment. And for me, when I suppose I have this piece of painting that I made, that was made on 2nd April and this when I look at it later it's going to remind me of that quarantine time where you know a can of tuna and some canned tomatoes were pretty much what maybe people were fighting for so it it it's like a memory stamp I like my art to be a memory stamp and to tell a story that's what's keeping me motivated and also it, it's a kind of um self-care so I really, really have enjoyed and thankful that I've been able to make art during this time. I recently uh, got a new job in Ottawa and I had just joined it for two weeks and this was in the beginning of March and I had to come back in such a haste because of all this. So, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We're all making art together. We're all in, we're, we're a community. So um, it's, it's been good to be back home. All right, let's move forward. So I'm going to show you a bit of my, some of my tools. And then I'm going to talk about this other project that has c come up during this time. So this is my pen tablet and I use this always for my digital prints. So that lives on the table. Uh, this is how I keep my, my needles. So this is a quilted sample you know, with some off cuts and ends, but because it's, it's got batting inside, it, it keeps the needles nice and secure. <laughs> um, I, I use a lot of watercolor and then there's these old water soluble color pencils that are so old. They're from, from my dad's time, but they're really, really great colors and um, they work well when you're highlighting certain areas. So Another project that's really come up during this time, uh, because I identify as a textile designer and also a painter, is I did this project last year in about probably October, um, and it was a customized, well, custom painted tote bag by, um, uh, I can pin her name. Actually, I should pin my own Instagram handle. One second, so you guys know who I am. Design. Okay. And pin comment. Okay. So um during that period I worked on that custom printed a leather bag 
and they, it was a silent auction to raise funds for the Princess Margaret Cancer Association. So what I really noticed was painting on leather has such a different texture and it, I really really enjoyed that process. So something else I have ventured on during this time and it's just a start is I decided to start painting some of these prints, um, you know, floral prints on recycled or thrifted leather goods and bags. So I'll show you what I have so far. So this is an example of a red leather and I printed a floral on it. Another thing I don't really use a lot of is pencil. I like to work freehand because I find that when I work with pencil, it, it restricts me. Uh, I was I was probably the, and I, I was, the kid who would be given coloring books and I, I never liked, I would go out of the line because I wanted to make it something else. So that's why I, I don't work with pencil a lot. Um, another example is this one right here. Oh, I realize you won't be able to thank you for the hearts. Um, is this, and this is the name that I'm calling my new venture. And there's also some beads, if you're able to notice. Uh, I work with metallic a lot, too. So beading, surface design, telling a story, different layers, working with light are some of the central themes that I keep going back to. I always find myself doing that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's what I've been working on during this time. And another project that's coming up is um, I'm going to be doing a custom printed larger leather piece. So I'll be working on that during this time as well. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? I sit back down. Any questions? I can show you more of my desk area. Um, I'd like to show you actually one of my favorite books and one of my favorite painters as well. I get a lot of inspiration from this book. So this is an artist named Florine Stettheimer and I visited her exhibit probably two years ago at the AGO. Um, speaking of the AGO, I mean, we all miss going to the gallery, so I hope that we're able to, something comes up about that soon. So this book is about some of her artworks and it's entitled Painted Poetry, because Florine Stettheimer was also a painter, a poet. So let me show you one of my favorite paintings. This is some of her work. So it's very, it's got those dreamy colors. Very inspiring, very like my work um, in terms of color and, and mood. So I keep a few of these inspiring things right on my table over here, along with my fantasy books. Um, what else do I have here? I also have these paintings here. So these are done on canvas. And I work less on canvas, but I, I do enjoy it. Uh, this is a, a print by Gustav Klimt, always inspiring. Here's another painting. And this one has led to a lot of uh, further translation. This painting was the, the test painting, if you will, for a live painting that I did for the Queen West art crawl on a on a huge huge canvas that hold on that canvas for it was a live painting and it was probably about six feet by six feet and I'm pretty short so it was um it took all day but it was a great experience and it was during one of the hottest days of the summer but it was a great experience um Let's see. 
what other questions we have here. Mm. So what do you do with your spare time when you're not creating art? I love watching documentaries. I love reading fantasy, fantasy novels. I recently started cooking more, which is quite nice. And um, I also have an aquarium, so I take care of my fish in the aquarium as well. Yeah, I have this plant here. Hello! That I work, I work with this plant. It stays right here. And then there's natural light coming from the balcony, which is always nice. Um, I love sitting outside and looking at the clouds. I, I could do that all day, I love that. So that's kind of my, my life at the moment. And I'm just so thrilled to be a part of this live tour. I can show you my space and my work. Um, any questions so far? Hmm. I guess in the future I would like to continue more of the polychromatic printing. Like I showed you right in the beginning. Because I think it's the best way for me to get my painting onto the fabric which does the fabric justice and also creates these new results that I really really enjoy but for that I'll need a bigger studio so maybe those are my my next steps and um, yeah I'm just gonna be continuing making more art during this time you were going to show us your rough sketchbooks yes of course yes rough sketchbooks Okay, so as you can see, even in this little video tour, I've made quite a mess, but you know, I, I enjoy my mess. You should love your mess. <laughs> so there's this sketchbook that brings back a lot of memories. This was during my thesis time, and it has different, um, like, I would say enhanced strokes. So I do call it a stroke book uh, and like I, I found myself making the same thing again and again and how I could work with that in creating a print or a pattern. This one again and some of these I've developed further into prints. They're on my profile on my Instagram and then I also do a lot of these color pages so they're just washes of color this one it's potion dye so it has a different effect like it's a fabric dye so when you paint it gets gives a different kind of um, texture on the fabric there's this one that's quite nice and then this could be a background for a print or if I could embroider on it so I find that quite um, useful and inspiring some more collaging so one other thing I enjoy a lot that I've noticed is um, painting in the negative spaces so I never start with a background with watercolor I like to go in and then do the details after even if it's a fine detail it's just like those secret spaces that come out whenever you're painting with watercolor like all this was painted after in the gaps and I like uh, thank you I like working with um, a color that you wouldn't expect or a color that doesn't necessarily go there but it changes the entire mood of um, of the painting another example of that is in here this painting especially so I started and there's a process video of this on my Instagram page as well so I started with these green green pillars green and blue pillars and all the pink was added in after even these fine areas Do, I have a question you're wearing a very nice top does your art inspire your choice in clothing thank you um, yes it does so this shirt I actually, I have experience. I've worked as an apparel designer for Blue Notes for around two years. 
after graduating from OCAD. So this is one of the stripes that I designed for Blue Notes. Thank you for that question. Um, so going back to this, and yes, even when I'm picking clothes and different, um, I, I like to choose colors and textures that, that I like. Hello to all the new people who joined. All right, so again, I like to go into these little fine details. They're like little magical areas. Another example of that is this one right here. So I worked with this green and I enjoyed so much going into these little areas. And it's almost like a challenge then to uh, to make sure it stays, it stays right. But I guess what makes it different from the whole coloring book idea is that it's on my terms. Like this um, little gap that was was formed was from my brush stroke, so it was not meant to be there. Um, so I really enjoy doing that. A little bit more of my sketchbooks. Okay, let's see what is a fun thing to show you. So here's a good example of using my scraps and offcuts. So these are fringed areas, extra threads, and quilted areas. So the background is like that. So this orange piece is under this piece. So definitely upcycling and reusing things is, um, I, I do that a lot. Here's a, a sample of trapping the, the offcuts and and the parts when you're cutting fabric that you would just throw away, I like to keep them because you never know what it could, could make when you put it together in different ways. Some more examples. Let's see. So maybe I'll show you like this. This might be easier. So here's another sample. And if you notice, this top layer is polychromatic. And then I've done like an embroidery with wire. Quite delicate. But this polychromatic print was done on top of this layer and on with this under. So it translated to under as well. And then with whatever was left on the screen, um, this is a partial print of that with some beading. So how can you get different results from the same action? And how can you translate watercolor to fabric is what I constantly look into. There's some different textures and um, different strokes. This is a sample of painting on um, mylar, which is a plastic-like texture. Hello to the new people. Here's some more examples of that. This is printing on a very light tissue, so it gives a very different result. But, you know, I, I keep going back to thank you to watercolor because I do enjoy that the most. It's another example of a polychromatic print, and there's some really light stitching to add detail. And if you look underneath, you can see all the the stitch marks, the parts where there's extra dye marks. Here's my dog again. <laughs> so, enjoy that very much. And here's like an off cut of the piece from these, and then I painted the yellow behind it. So it's, it's, it's forever translating, I'm forever translating from this to that, and there's a kind of um, a flow that develops. And that's when I'm most enjoying my art the most. So that's pretty much my process and how I work. Um, I keep my brushes right here in a mug. And some of my favorite brushes I had ready to show you already a little wet. So there's this angled, angled brush that I enjoy very much. Um, definitely the really fine brush, number zero. And there's like a long flowy brush that can create a lot of um, a larger volume of paint <sighs> okay so let's see if there's any other questions mm. I think we 
we've been through all the questions. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask me? I can just wait for a bit. No problem. Well, I guess I would end the video here then. Uh, show us around. Oh, <laughs> all right. I can do one more tour. Okay. So, as I mentioned, this is my table area, which is looking kind of messy now, but you can step back a little bit. Forever inspired by Claude Monet. Thank you. Thanks for everyone who came. Um, and I, I like to live in my creative den, which is like organized chaos and has all the things I love. I'm very into narrative and story, and I collect these tiny objects and you know little things that remind me of a moment in time uh thank you <laughs> magical box uh this is how my thesis was developed actually from the fabric that i worked with the polychromatic fabric you can see there was wire stitched in and i found a way to do this by machine and then i can manipulate the forms so i do really like creating textile forms as well so then when, when you group them together when there's many it it creates uh, a different different result and adds more narrative to the entire space um when i did my thesis project at ocad hi everyone i worked with sound as well as movement so i had a fan that would move these forms um so that and it was an immersive installation so when you would walk into it you would feel like you're somewhere else which relates to the the fantasy part and i enjoy fantasy so much the same fan is right here i i need the fan with me at all times it's kind of um a white noise that i'm just so used to now okay let's turn back here okay All right, it's a lot of new comments. I came in late. Can you show one of your finished piece? Yes, I would love to. So I would like to show you my polychromatic printing, which is printing with dye onto the screen, and then it's translated onto the fabric. So this is a sample of one of those. And what I often like to do with such printing is, when you print the first time, a lot of the dye has already been transferred onto the fabric, but I like to shift it just so little and print one more time, because then it creates this ghost image. And um, since I'm constantly drawn to these themes of storytelling and um, the ethereal, um, I, I really enjoy that quality of this kind of process. So that would be one of them. And another, example would be like this painting right here this painting is actually uh, a good example of scale and how i add all these details in the end all of these fine details were added after the pink and in these little spaces um, again there's a lot of process video for this in my profile as well and i've pinned my instagram handle Another finished piece would probably be, I do paint on leather and I'm trying to work with a lot of upcycled leather uh, to, to it, I think it's a good medium to translate my paintings. I also bead on it. And um, another example would be this little shiny thing here because it, it has a lot of information in it, though it's small. So it's got these tiny beaded areas and different layers, different layers of fabric. Uh, a lot of it is hand dyed and using off cuts. And there's tiny beading as well. If you look on the back side, it's very fascinating to me. I like to work with thin, opaque, organza-like fabrics because it works really well in the light. Like it changes the the meaning of what you made and that's a very interesting concept to me. So you can see the details very differently. 
And another example of that is right here. And this is using that shiny fabric, which I think is kind of like a, a cousin of this print in a way. Yeah? Is it just me who thinks that? <laughs> Alright, let me look at some more of your comments because I've just been talking and talking. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you for everyone waving. Hello. All right. All right. Thank you for everyone who came. And I think I should probably end the video now. Um, thank you to Arts Etobicoke for having me and it was just a pleasure to show you my workspace and show you all my work um, and again I have I've pinned my Instagram handle so if you have any questions if you want to um, talk about something feel free to reach out to me so um, thank you everyone thank you Akshata again who is the program coordinator thank you for having me so um, thanks everyone bye